Hello, and welcome to the third series of Virtual Birding with Mike. I'm your host, Mike Perrin, the Terracor Land Stewardship Coordinator with Wareham Land Trust. Today, I will be talking about coastal birds that you might be able to find around Wareham, on the beach or in marshes, which Wareham tends to have a lot of. These coastal birds can be birds like shorebirds, like sandpipers and plovers, they can be wading birds, like great blue herons and great egrets, or they can even be water birds, like gulls or terns. For coastal birding, Little Harbor Beach has the highest diversity of shorebirds and water birds that one can find in Wareham. Little Harbor Beach has a good mix of marsh and beach, and even has some special birds that nest there annually. I'll talk about those birds later, but for now, let's dive in. When looking for places to bird, I always turn to the trusty eBird hotspot map. Looking at the eBird map for Wareham, Little Harbor Beach stuck out as a beach having a great diversity of coastal birds. This was my first clue as to where I might film the video, and after speaking with some local birders, they all agreed that this would be a great spot to film this session of virtual birding with Mike. For this session, we will do things a bit differently. Since the wind at the beach proposes an obstacle for audio, I will be taking photos and videos of the birds that I see, then recording separate audio to accompany the footage. I will also include a few videos filmed through my spotting scope, a so-called birding telescope that is great for far out coastal birds. This is called digiscoping which is a great way to show an audience what birding in the field might actually look like. Let's look at some birds. On my way into Little Harbor Beach, I spotted a very active osprey nest on the Little Harbor Country Club golf course. Taking a closer look, I saw that the nest contained two juvenile birds and an adult, likely the mama. The juveniles look different from the parents because they have red eyes, mangy feathers, and just overall look awkward. I took some videos and departed, as I could tell the mother was not happy to see me spying on the nest. If you are interested in helping with monitoring osprey breeding activities, please shoot me an email, which will be included in the slide at the end of this video. Pulling into the parking lot, I spotted a handful of one of the public's favorite birds, the herring gull. Herring gulls are found near water and are large gulls with white underparts, gray wings and back, and a red patch on the lower bill. There are three species of gull one can expect to regularly see in Wareham. The ring-billed gull, which is smaller than this herring gull and has a black band around the bill, and the great black back gull, which is larger than the herring gull and has a black back. Gulls are considered one of the most successful families of birds in the world as gull species occupy habitats ranging from Walmart parking lots to the high arctic. Because gulls do not exclusively live by the sea, most birders refrain from saying the term seagull. Taking a scan over the water, I spy another bird in the gull genus, the common tern. Terns are one of my favorite species of bird because they are fast, agile, and amazing fishers. Fisher people often chase feeding frenzies of terns while out fishing on boats, as terns bring them to smaller bait fish that are typically being chased by larger fish that people want to catch. One can expect to see the common tern with white underparts and gray above the reddish bill, and least terns, which are smaller, have a white patch on the forehead and have yellow bills. Least terns are a threatened species. When I am at the beach, I am constantly impressed with turns quickness and noisiness. One of the most abundant shorebirds on the beach is the willet, shown here. The willet is a large shorebird with gray overall and a black bill. They are very loud and always announcing their name. Willet, willet, willet. There's a white M on the upper wing that can be seen in flight, which is a really good field mark to identify these birds. These birds can be seen and heard in most marshes and beaches in Wareham. They have a sensitive tip to their bill that can allow them to sense food scurrying around in the sand. So they stick their bill in, feel around, 
and that is their feeding style. Another group of coastal birds that are not exactly shorebirds are the wading birds. Wading birds slowly walk through the shorelines and marshes in search of prey, including small fish, large fish even, and frogs. Once they see their prey, they hit the water with lightning fast speed to spear or catch fish with their long, sharp bills. One of the most common species of wading birds in Wareham is the great blue heron that most people are familiar with. The great blue heron is bluish grayish overall and looks like a dinosaur in flight. Another very common wading bird species is the great egret, which is all white with an orange bill and is roughly the same size as a great blue heron. There's another egret that you can find in Wareham called the snowy egret. The snowy egret is much smaller than the great egret, has really delicate plumes coming off the head, and has yellow feet, or sometimes referred to as yellow slippers. Another species of wading bird in Wareham is the green heron. The green heron is a very short and stout wading bird that will hang out on logs, on the shoreline, and catch small fish as they swim by. Another coastal bird species is the double-crested cormorant. The double-crested cormorant is all black bird with an orangey-yellow bill. You can oftentimes see these cormorants sunning their wings on rocks and on the shoreline, as shown here. This was actually taken from the onset pier. Cormorants will dry their wings out because they've evolved to absorb water in their feathers as opposed from shed water. This allows them to dive deeper and swim faster in pursuit of their prey, which is exclusively fish. Before I talk about one of the most beloved and controversial shorebird species on the East Coast, I would like to talk about another phenomena that I witnessed at Little Harbor Beach that can sometimes be seen while people are coastal birding. I found this gull with an injured foot just walking around the parking lot. Injured gulls know that they can find easy food from people dropping sandwiches, chips, or even other gulls dropping clams and other shellfish. This gull seems to be pretty smart and is likely going to survive. Now let's talk about one of the cutest, most controversial birds on the East Coast, the piping plover. Piping plovers are medium-sized shorebirds with a black collar, sandy grayish top, white undersides, and an orange bill with a black tip. They are state and federally threatened due to shoreline development and nest failure due to beachgoers walking on dunes. The bird is so controversial for this reason. Fences are placed around the dunes and coastal vegetation where piping plovers and other threatened species like least terns create their nests and raise their young. Most people understand the need to protect this sensitive habitat, which goes beyond just protection for nesting birds, but some beachgoers feel cheated or angry about the enclosures, as it may block access to remote parts of the beaches and also requires that beachgoers have their dogs on leash. Dogs present a huge threat to nesting birds, as it might stress them out enough to abandon the nest and chicks, or the dog can sometimes even prey upon the chicks or trample nests. In 1986, there were only about 150 breeding pairs of piping plovers in Massachusetts. Now, there are over 700 pairs and over 10,000 individuals. There are many stakeholders protecting piping plovers in Massachusetts, the most notable organizations being Mass Wildlife and Mass Autobahn. While watching birds on the beach, always walk slowly and keep an eye out for white flashes moving along the rack line, or the seaweed between the water and the dunes. Piping plovers can be extremely difficult to spot while hunkered down in the sand, as shown by this baby in camouflage. 
but with a keen eye, one can see them running along, stopping to feed, and continue running. Unlike the willet, who feeds somewhat stationary, these birds run from place to place to forage, which adds to their overall charismatic behavior, which can be seen in this video of the family running along the beach together. If you are lucky, you might even witness a parent pretending to be injured to lead you away from a nest. They perceive you as a threat or a predator and don't want you anywhere near their chicks. The parents will do this to predators such as foxes and raccoons that will chase the injured bird for an easy snack. And once far enough away from the nest, the plover will take off and proudly announce, See you later, I fooled ya. Please always remember to keep off dunes that have these fences placed around them. This bird really needs our help. The best thing that you can possibly do is stay away from their sensitive nesting habitats. While leaving Little Harbor Beach after filming for this video, another one of my favorite shorebirds flew overhead, the American oyster catcher. Oyster catchers are large black and white shorebirds with a reddish orange bill. As their name implies, these birds eat shellfish such as oysters, clams, and other mollusks. I was told by some other birders that they breed in or around Little Harbor ba Beach, but after not seeing or hearing any after a few hours, I was truly relieved with this brief look. If you do go looking for coastal birds, do not forget to take in the other amazing wildlife around you. Because beaches have a wonderful supply of food such as aerial insects, sand-dwelling insects, and carrion, there will often be non-exclusively coastal birds such as grackles, swallows, and crows. One can also find crabs such as fiddler crabs shown here with one large claw and one small claw blue crabs, hermit crabs, and horseshoe crabs. One of my favorite birding experiences from this winter was not about birds at all. While out looking for rare birds at Race Point Beach in Provincetown, I spotted three North Atlantic right whales, which biologists estimate there are only 300 to 400 left in the wild. Another good friend of mine saw a white shark breach while birding near Nosset Marsh. In summary, the marshes and beaches found around Wareham present a great opportunity for coastal birding. Since these birds can only be found for a few months during the summer, I recommend getting out as soon as possible. Please remember to socially distance, wear sunscreen, wear a mask, and stay off the dunes. Thank you for watching another episode of Virtual Birding with Mike, and feel free to email me with any questions or concerns you may have. Happy birding!